أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم أخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمنا بنور الفهم وافتح علينا بمعرفة العلم وسهل أخلاقنا بالحلم وجعلنا مما يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه اللهم اجعل أعمالنا خالصة لوجهك ولا تجعل فيها حظا لغيرك وصل اللهم على سيدنا ونبينا ولنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة وبركاته أعزب رؤية ترى السلام عليكم ورحمة وبركاته جود جود الحمد لله تعال مين How does my screen look Like normal. Okay, so you can see my old screen. Yes, and you can see my number on the top right of our screen, and we can see the, the textbook open in the background for the workbook. Okay. Okay, no, no, no problem. Alhamdulillah. Just wanted to check because this morning when I opened up my laptop, my screen was broken, so I can't see the left hand side of my screen. Alhamdulillah. Um, As long as you guys can see it, that's fine. So before we get into our Nahu again, we will just uh, say our sort of scales as we usually do. Um, so let's do that. I'll be mentioning one of these. Let's do uh, the Mazid Fee scales. Fa'ala. Fa'ala. Yufa'ilu. Taf'ilan. Mufa'ilun. Mufa'ilun. Fa'il. لا تفعل فاسكا فاعل يفاعل فعالا مفاعلة مفاعل مفاعل فاعل لا تفعل وسكال افعل يفعل افعالا مفعل مفعل افعل لا تفعل Fifth scale, تفعل يتفعل تفعل متفعل متفعل تفعل لا تتفعل. Sixth, sixth scale, تفعل يتفعل تفعل متفعل متفعل تفعل لا تتفعل. Seven scale. In fa'ala, yanfa'ilu. In fi'alan, munfa'ilun. Munfa'alun, in fa'il, la tanfa'il. The eighth scale. If ta'ala, yafta'ilu. If ti'alan, mufta'ilun. Mufta'alun, if ta'il, la tafta'il. The ninth scale, if'al, yaf'al, if'ilal, muf'al, if'al, la taf'al. The tenth scale, istaf'al, yastaf'il, istif'al, mustaf'il, mustaf'al, istaf'il, la tastaf'il. was our sort of mazid fee scales um now we go back to our nahu bi idhni allah ta'ala um one second all right um In our last lesson in Nahu, we were dealing with the khabar. Um, we went through the various forms that the khabar can take. We said that uh, the khabar in a sentence can either be uh, identified as a singular word or it can be identified as various constructs, right? Um, when we have those constructs, there won't be a single word in a sentence that is considered the 
the khabar, rather that the entire part of the sentence together will be considered the khabar, but we will analyze each component of that construct according to its role in that construct. For example, uh, when we have a harful jar and ismul majroor as the khabar, we will identify the harful jar as a harful, harful jar and the ismul majroor as a ismul majroor. And we'll say together those two things are the khabar, but not a single one of them gets called the khabar. Right? The same goes for when we have a dharf and mudafun ilay. Same goes for when the khabar is a, is a complete verbal sentence or when the khabar is a nominal sentence in and of itself, a new nominal sentence. Examples of where the examples of where the khabar is a singular word is when um, the khabar is made up of a mudaf, mudafun ilay construction. Well, it could be just a singular word, a normal, just one word on its own. It could be where it's a mudaf, mudafun ilay construction. Another example could be when it's a mausuf and sifa construction. Uh, those are all cases where the khabar is one word. Right, and then in our homework before last week and in our last week's lesson, we completed uh, the 24 examples that we had for identifying what the khabar was. Right? The initial homework or the initial exercise was just to translate all of them. And then I told you to go over them again for homework, identifying what the khabar is. Now, seeing that my screen is broken, I don't know if my pen is going to work. But let's try and just go through them and identify what the khabar is. Alhamdulillah, see what looks over there. Um, so I want you guys to help me. We're just going to go through each of them and identify what is the khabar, right? So go for it, Bismillah. Number one. What's the khabar? What single word will we identify as the khabar? Anasu. Anasu. So we're just going to go through it quickly. If you have any trouble or you have any issue or question on one, then you can stop me over there. Alimun is the khabar. Tilka ayatul kitabil mubin. Ayatu. There we go. Wa nahnu usbatun. 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 Good. Wallahu alimun bima ya'malun. Wallahu alimun bima ya'malun. Alim. 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 There we go. Good. That's just the verb, right? But all of the rest of it's attached to that. So it's that whole thing there. The it is, what we have is that the Nahnu is the Mubtara. 
and the naqusu is a verb so we know already that the khabar is going to be a verbal sentence the entire verbal sentence is the khabar wahum la yash'uruna Right, the whole verbal sentence. Wahua min al kadibina. Min al kadibina. Daru majurur. There we go. Min al kadib. Wahua min al sadiqin. Same. Min al sadiqin. Zalika min fadlillahi alayna. It's all Jaru Majroor. So Min is Ism Majroor. Fadl is, oh, Min is Harful Jar. Fadli Ism Majroor. Allah is attached to Fadl because it's the, uh, it's the Mudafun Ilay. And Alayna is just connected to Fadlillah. It's, it's a separate Jaru Majroor. That's like parentheses. It gives us extra information about the Fadl. Alhamdu. لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب واتخبر يا لله شر وجود. okay you can say لله or you can say that all thing لله الذي أنزل على عبد الكتاب. because the الذي is a صفة for it right for Allah. okay فهم لا يؤمنون لا يؤمنون لا يؤمنون طائركم معكم 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 رايت ظرف اند مضاف اليه وانتم قوم مسرفون قوم مسرفون Right, the thing at the word Qawmun, Musrifuna is a sifra for it. Single word over there. Washamsu tajari li mustaqarri laha. Tajari li mustaqarri laha. Tajari is the ismul, it's a verb, right? And that li mustaqarri laha is jaru majurur. Mm -hmm. Both of those are connected to the verb tajri. So oh. is the whole phrase the khabar maulana? Yeah, that whole verbal sentence. Or you can say it also the tajri, and then the limustaqarin is muta, you can call it muta'alliq be tajri, it's a, it's a parenthesis that's attached to tajri. And um, yeah, so you, you can break it down further like that. ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم. تقدير. تقدير العزيز العليم. Right, just the first word. Just the first word. The second is just مضاف. The other two are just مضاف only later. Ah. نحن خلقناكم. هذا هو ذا بسيط. خلقناكم. أنتم تخلقوا أو سوري. أأنتم تخلقونه أم نحن الخالقون؟ This is actually a question. أنتم بيد مبتلى. As the whole verbal sentence will be the the, the Okay, so that's the verbal sentence. And then in this part here, am nahnu khaliqun. Actually, second one. This will be the al khaliqun. Nahnu al khaliqun. That will be the khabar. Nahnu qaddarna baynakum al mauta. Nahnu qaddarna. بينكم الموتى. What's it going to be? قدرنا بينكم الموتى. قدرنا بينكم الموتى. Good. 
قدرنا الموتى that's my 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 verbal sentence بينكم is an adverb that's connected to that sentence ونحن مس ونحن وما نحن بمسبوقين what's it gonna be yeah? بمسبوقين بمسبوقين there we go بمسبوقين حرف الجر اسم المجرور أأنتم تزرعونه أم نحن الزارعون this one is similar to number 21 Oh, sorry, number 20. That's that party, that's the party. And then the last one. وَأَنْتُمْ حِينَ إِذٍ تَنْظُرُونَ وَأَنْتُمْ Mahmoulina, sorry. It is, so Mola saying that 23, you've got two hubbards. Yeah, essentially the sentence is like broken up into two parts. It's, okay. are you... You know, the ones who cause him to grow. I'm نحن الزارعون. Or are we the ones who cause him to grow? No. So, yeah. Or you can look at the Amas. Yeah, you can look at it like that. وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْظُرُونَ وَأَنْتُمْ حِينَ إِذِنْ تَنْظُرُونَ تَنْظُرُونَ is it actually is, is actually what it is over here. حِينَ إِذِنْ is also... ظرف المضاف إليه وأنتم حين إذن تنظرون. Right. Now that we've identified all of those خبر. Any questions? Go back to the six, please. Number six. Please. Okay. بسم الله. Because it's حرف جار اسمه مجرور ولا ذا. Okay. Good, uh, good observation. Good, good observation. You see, yeah, in this sentence, that harful jar in ism majroor is not actually the khabar. That harful jar in ism majroor is just a parenthesis that's connected to the khabar. So this sentence actually means, وَأَنْتُمْ غَافِلُونَ عَنْهُ Uh, that makes sense in the trans in the translation. Yes, that's probably that's how you would have translated it. What you would say, and you know, if, if you had to translate it, you would have translated it like this. Whilst you, comma, regarding them, comma, are heedless. Right? How did you translate it? I translated, and you are neglectful to him or about him. So, okay. so that so now, anhum comes to the end. So you put the anhum at the end, right? Mm -hmm. Or you could translate it the way I said, and you, comma, regarding them, or whilst you, comma, regarding them, comma, are heedless. But remember, the khabar is the thing that comes after the is or are. It's the, it's the actual information. So the anhu here is just parenthesis. It's just extra information. So, so there's some understanding that needs to be applied there, right? It's not like a, a dry rule yes. that needs to be... Okay, cool. Yes. Okay. It's, the rule is not the thing that comes immediately after the mubtara has to be the khabar. There can be things in between it, like here we have a, a jaro majroor that's connected to mm. the khabar that comes between. Right? And, and that's mm. why our rule wasn't... We didn't create a rule for ourselves. The thing that comes immediately after the mubtara is the khabar. Mm. No. <clears throat> You said the information about the Mubtara is the Khabar. What the sentence is telling us about the Mubtara, that's the Khabar. So there has to be understanding in it. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thanks, man. So, Molina, I would say that you, what is the Mubtara and what about the Mubtara that will give you the, the answer to what is the Khabar? Yes. The okay. information, what the sentence is telling me about the mubtara, that is what will tell me what the khabar is. I could have, I mean, you know, in that one, I, I was specific there, but I could have done the same in, in some of the others. Like, for example, alhamdu lillahi. The khabar is lillahi. Right? 
and the oath thing alladhi anzala ala abdihi alkitaba those are all the alladhi is just a sifa for Allah and the alladhi is the ism mawsul so it must have a silatul mawsul that's anzala um, the fa'il of that anzala is going to be inside referring back to the alladhi which refers in turn to Allah the maf'ul of anzala is going to be al-kitaba so there, there's my verbal sentence then I have ala abdihi that's a harful jar ismul majroor and mudafun ilay that are just telling me about more about the verb anzala it's like a parent uh, you know parenthetical clause or something like that I don't know what, what exactly it will be called that's giving me more information about anzala alright so yeah, that's how you kind of break it down. <clears throat> um, is that understood? Any more questions on that? If not, then we can move on to the Muqtada Let's move on. Okay, so what is the Muqtada? So firstly, when doing the Muqtana, we, we broke this discussion up into a number of parts. So we have here, firstly we have the Muqtana focusing on a non-declinable Muqtana. Right, what do we mean by non-declinable Muqtana? A muqtada, that's a word like huwa, or hadha, or alladhi, right? Then we have a delayed muqtada, right? So we broke the muqtada up into those two parts. It seems like there's something missing here. Just give me a second. Right, so we broke it up into those two parts. So we're first going to look at the mubtada, when the mubtada is a, a non-declinable word, and then we're going to look at the mubtada when it's delayed. You do you already you already know about the, the normal mubtada. Right? The normal mubtada is going to be the first ism in a in a verbal sentence, or the what the sentence is about, what the sentence is talking about. Right? That's going to be what your muqtara is. Let's take the form of a noun. And the usual placing of it is at the beginning of a sentence. Right? Obviously, there's cases when we depart from that. And when we depart from that is when we have a delayed muqtara. But we're going to do that in our next lesson, inshallah. Normally, you know the muqtara that you learned in, in Nahu last year. It's, the, it's what the sentence is talking about. It's the noun that the sentence is talking about or the subject of the sentence, right? You know, it can be any noun, but the noun is going to be in halatul raf. <clears throat> now what, we, what we're looking at here is, is that, that at times the mubtara, though we say it must always be in halatul raf, it can be a word that's non-declinable, that's mabni. And when it is such, then we're not, we're just telling ourselves, reminding ourselves that this word doesn't have to show that it's in Arafat, right? And what tells me that you already know that is the fact that we had examples of that throughout the previous example. وَهُوَ بِكُلِّ شَيْنَ عَلِيمٌ تِلْكَ آيَاتُ اللَّهِ نَحْنُ عُصْبَةٌ 
see all of those the one is a damir one is a ismul ishara one is a, a damir again wa antum anhu ghaflun nahnu naqusu wa hum la yash'urun wa huwa min al kadhibin wa huwa min al kadhibin dhalika can you see all of those words none of them actually look like the inner of but for you to have identified the rest of the sentence as the khabar or the other part of the sentence as the khabar, you have to have recognized those as your mubtada. Right? So there's not something strange. All that we're saying is that the mubtada, which is a noun at the beginning of a sentence that the sentence is telling us about, it can also be a mabni word. Right? What is a, what is a mabni word? What do we mean by a mabni word here? Yeah, we mean a non-declinable word, but specifically a ism, a non-declinable ism. Right? Not a not a not a non-declinable verb, a non-declinable ism. Right? What does that mean? So what is a mabni ism? It's a non-declinable noun where the end casing is fixed. Cannot change. You already know what the Mabini word is, right? Now, does anybody have any confusion about what the Mabini word is? No. All right. So we know what the Mabini word is. We're saying so simply the first thing is that the Mab that the Muktarava sentence can also be a Mabini word. Now, when the mubtada is a mabni word, and this is what you must take note of. Then we say the hal is implied, or the state of raf, because remember the aru from last year, the mubtada is always in halatul raf. The mubtada is always in halatul raf. But now when the word is mabni, right, it doesn't change when it's in, uh, in raf and nasb or jar, it looks exactly the same. Then we say, the hal is implied. The hal is implied. We, we, we're teaching this for completeness sake. Right? And the correct Arabic expression of that would be, right? If I, if I look at the sentence, for example, um, if I look at the sentence, وَالشَّمْسُ تَجْرِي لِمُسْتَقَرِّ لَهَا right? And I ask you, analyze the sentence from Yotami, وَالشَّمْسُ uh, you will tell me that that is a mubtada, right? في حالة الرفع it's in حالة الرفع وعلامة رفعه the sign that it's in a rough is الضمة الظاهرة the apparent ضمة at the end of the word الشمس do you all follow that? if I, if I look at the sentence والشمس تجري لمستقر لها and I tell you, analyze the sentence for me. The first thing you're going to analyze is that word, or leave out the word, but the ashams here. Or shams, you're going to tell me. Ashams, it is a mubtada. It's in halatul raf. And the sign that is in halatul raf is the dhamma. Now, that differs slightly when you have a mabni word. Thalika, taqdeeru al-aziz al-alim. Thalika. I ask you analyze the sentence for me. Uh, what function does it play in the sentence? Somebody tell me. It's a mubtara. It's a mubtara. Good. Now I ask you what hal is it in? Must be in Rafun because it's a mubtara. Right. So how it differs is that in terms of our technical understanding of Arabic, we say it's fi mahalli raf. Listen, with Washem, so I said it's fi halati raf. Right? With this one, I said it's fi mahalli raf. Let me write, let me just put that on the board. With does this one, yeah. Manana, does it mean the one is that it's in the apparent state of raf, and the other one is the implied state of raf? Yes. And this one, yeah, I say, fee. 
محل لتلي منزل لو كس او سي اسمه مكان محل في ما حل رف it's in the place of a rough it's in the place of something that's supposed to be a rough that's the technical uh, meaning of it, right so as you said halatul raf will mean it's 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 in an apparent state of raf fi mahal raf will mean it's in an implied state of raf right because it's this mabni word is in the place of something that has to be in halatul raf we say it's it's in the uh, it's in an implied state of raf understood what what did we change the nothing changed in, in in terms of you know our understanding of the sentence the only thing that changed is that we said now we just there's a technical differentiation the one we're saying it's an apparent set of rough and the other one we're saying it's an implied set of rough what technical terms or wording did we use for that the one we says fi halati rough when it's apparent the other one we said fi mahalli rough it's an implied state of rough <clears throat> and you can have the same for when a word is supposed to be in 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 nasb but it's a mabni word you can say it's fi mahalli nasb uh, if if you have a word that is uh, supposed to be in halatul jar but it's a mabni word you'll say it's fi mahalli jar right so that's just a technicality don't get yourself bogged down with it. right but but do know it why do i say do know it in knowing these things right you will enable yourself to access arabic books and you, you know, for many of you, you may think to yourself, oh, no, no, that's far off. It's so difficult, whatever. But actually, uh, you know, if I put an a Arabic book on, like, uh, not just any book necessarily, but if I put some books on maybe a Nahu analysis of the Quran, knowing these little things will enable you to, to understand what that kind of text is saying. Um, I remember for myself in my first year at Darun Naim, to be, to be honest with you, I couldn't uh, like pick up any Arabic book and, and read the Arabic book until maybe later in the first year, and even then with difficulty. But I could pick up a uh, Arab explanation of the Quran and understand what it was saying. I didn't know everything, but I definitely could get uh, a lot of information there from. And maybe after we done this lesson, I'll, I'll perhaps give you some examples of that, inshallah. From an actual Arab tafsir. So that's why that, you know, that's just, I'm just telling you what the benefit there is of knowing the difference between the halat al raf and fi mahalli raf. Okay. Examples of mabni words include what? Dhamir, um, the dhamair, all of them. Hua, Huma, Hum, Hia, Huma, Hun, Anta, Antuma, Antum, Anti, Antuma, Antuna, Anna, Nahnu. You know all of those words? You learned them last year, right? Yes, ma'am. And you learned that they were non declinable, right? That's right, Modena. Okay. Did you learn the next two classes of words? Asma ul Ishara and Asma ul Mosula. I believe so. Okay, good. So then basically the next class of word is Asma'ul Ishara, an indicative noun, right? And the Ismul Mausul, which is a conjunctive noun. <clears throat> indicative nouns and conjunctive nouns. It's not easy writing on the screen. Indicative noun, conjunctive noun. Um, that's just the translation of it. What does it mean? Asma'ul ishara, words like hadha, and obviously the feminine parts, hadha, hadihi, that's for close. And then the, pl the plurals as well, and the duals. Um, but actually the duals can change. So. Just the, the, the singulars and the plurals. Hada, hadihi. Plural of both of them is ha'ulai. 
all of those are mabni words dhalika that dhalika and tilka and then also the plurals ulaika those indicative nouns are all mabni then we have the uh, conjunctive nouns asma al mawsula there's many of them uh, the masculines and the feminines allathi allati allatheena allati or allai all of them are mabni um, and then there's other asma al mawsula as well uh, like ma etc all of those are examples of mabni words and so yeah we're just making the point that the mubtara will will often be a mabni word let's just be cognizant of that that shouldn't throw you off or make you think that that's not the mubtara no it's a very normal thing and you must just know that the word now we we call it we say it's fi mahalli raf it's in an implied state of raf um so they the lesson here is basically to just translate the following sentence innama نحن مصلحون وأنتم وأنتم تعلمون هو هو الذي خلق لكم ما في الأرض جميعا أولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون there's actually two sentences so what I want you to do for me over here is translate this, the, the sentences right okay, there's no numbers here it's quite a few of them It's about 20, maybe about 25 also. Um, so for homework, inshallah, try and translate as many of these as possible. Uh, because this lesson is extremely easy. It's just highlighting the fact that at times the muqtara is a mabni word. And when it is a mabni word, we, we don't say it's in halatu raf, we say it's in fi mahalli raf. Right? There isn't that much to that. So what I want you to do is, um, just go through that example, uh, all those examples on page number 11 and 12, and translate those for homework and identify as well for me what the Mubtada is. Uh, the next lesson is going to be a little bit more involved, the delayed Mubtada. Right, with the Mubtada Mu'akhar. Again, it's not insanely difficult, but uh, it's, it's a, there's a little bit more to it then. In this lesson, are there any questions on that before we before we end the video? No questions. Okay, so we end there for now. What is that? Well, Khairan. Well, Khairan. Well, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'll uh, see you guys later in the... Uh, okay. um, I'm going to make you the host and you can make Mullah Irshad the host when he comes in. Inshallah.